Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus 1 over x equals x to the 4th power plus 1 over x to the 4th power. And we're going to be looking for an expression for f of x. We could also be looking for something like f of 3, f of square root of 2, f of 1 half. But once you find f of x, the rest is easy to find. I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the second one. For my second method, I'm going to do the following. Since I'm looking for f of something, like a single variable, I want to set this equal to another variable. So let's go ahead and set x plus 1 over x equal to z. And then from here, I get the following. Multiply both sides by x. x squared plus 1 equals zx. And then put everything on the same side. And then you'll get a quadratic equation. Right? And by using the quadratic formula, we can easily solve this. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, a is 1, divided by 2a. Okay, so that is the x value in terms of the z. All right? So now what am I going to do with this? Well, since I have something in terms of x on the right-hand side, I can just go ahead and what I found for x uh, on the right-hand side, I can just go ahead and substitute. Right? Makes sense. Okay, so let's... Uh, just let me just remind you what the original problem was asking for so we were given this and we're trying to find f of x from here so now we have an expression for x which we got from here by setting this equal to z now let's go ahead and plug this in for x here and here in two places so that's why i need to evaluate this expression to the fourth power let's go ahead and do that first so i'm going to start off with x to the fourth which is z plus z plus square root of z squared minus 4 over 2. By the way, plus or minus sign, it doesn't matter here which one you use. But a lot of times we use the plus sign. Let's go ahead and use the minus sign this time. Okay, so that is going to be x to the fourth power. Okay, that's what I need. Let's leave it at that. Do not expand it. Uh, you don't want to because there is a lot of radicals, so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and find 1 over x to the 4th power. Now what is 1 over x to the 4th power? It's just a reciprocal, so you can just flip it, right? Well, um, that's right, so we can write it like 2 over z minus the square root of z squared minus 4, and then that to the 4th power. But here, we can do something. Uh, multiply by conjugates. So we can kind of write this as 2 over z minus square root of z squared minus 4. And then that could be multiplied by z plus the square root of z squared minus 4. And the same thing. And divide by that. So that's 1. But then we want to raise it to the 4th power, of course. Now these two are conjugates. And these two are just going to be multiplied. So let's go ahead and find 1 over x to the 4th from here. 2 times z plus square root of z squared minus 4. And at the bottom, we're going to get z squared from difference of two squares minus square root of z squared minus 4 squared, which is z squared minus 4. But this is equal to 4. So 2 goes into 4 two times, and we end up with z plus the square root of z squared minus 4 divided by 2 as the answer. 4, 1 over x to the 4th. So I got 1 over x to the 4th, and I got x to the 4th. Now, we forgot to do one thing, forgot the 4th power here. Okay, let's go ahead and raise the whole thing to the fourth power. Now, let's write down what we have. We have x to the fourth power and 1 over x to the fourth power. Let's go ahead and add them up. So, x to the fourth power is z minus square root of z squared minus 4 over 2 in that to the fourth power. And 1 over x to the fourth is just the conjugate. Notice that it is not the, just the reciprocal, but it's also the conjugate, so which is nice, right? Okay, great. So we're supposed to add these two expressions and find a hopefully simpler expression in terms of z. But don't expand these. We're going to do the following. We're going to use the binomial theorem. So let's go ahead and expand this and expand that. Okay. From the binomial theorem, the first one is going to give us a to the fourth minus 4a cubed b plus 6a squared b squared minus 4 ab cubed plus b to the fourth power and the second one is all positive same thing but all positive positive. and now what we're going to do is we're going to add these things right 
and some terms are going to cancel out. When we add these two things, we're going to get a minus b to the fourth power plus a plus b to the fourth power. And here, notice that we can cancel out uh, the negative 4 and positive 4 and negative 4 and positive 4 and we end up with the following a to the fourth plus a to the fourth is going to give us 2a to the fourth 6 plus 6 is 12 a squared b squared and finally we have 2b to the fourth power so something symmetrical which is kind of nice and we'll, we'll probably use this idea in another problem anyways that's another story but we got this sum which is nice because we can apply that property here because we have exactly the same thing, a minus b to the fourth and a plus b to the fourth. And then uh, since we have a 2 to the fourth at the bottom, we can actually first do this and then take care of the 16 later. So I want to add this to the fourth and this to the fourth. They're conjugates, remember, just like a minus b and a plus b. And what is the sum? So this is my a and this is my b. What's the sum? 2a to the 4th power, so 2z to the 4th, plus 12a squared, which is z squared, times b squared. b squared is z squared minus 4. And then plus 2b to the 4th, 2b or not 2b, sorry about that. And that is going to be 2 times, okay, how, what is b to the 4th? b squared is z squared minus 4, so b to the 4th is z squared minus 4 squared. You just have to square this, okay? Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this, and then it, uh, we're going to wrap it up. So this is 2z to the 4th plus 12z to the 4th minus 48z squared plus, this is going to be z to the 4th minus 8z squared plus 16. Multiply everything by 2. 2z to the 4th minus 16z squared plus 32. Let's go ahead and combine like terms. We get 2z to the 4th plus 2z to the 4th plus 12z to the 4th. That is 16z to the 4th minus 48z squared minus 16, that's minus 64z squared plus 32. But we're going to uh, divide it by 16, remember? So x to the 4th plus, hopefully you can follow, plus 1 over x to the 4th equals this divided by 16. Because remember, uh, we had a 2 to the 4th at the bottom, right? Which is 16. And from here we get x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4th equals z to the 4th minus 4z squared plus 2. Now where does this come from? Well, we said that f of x plus 1 over x equals x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4th. We call this z and now we got this. So f of z from here becomes z to the 4th minus 4z squared plus 2. Therefore, f of x can be written as x to the 4th minus 4x squared plus 2. And this brings us to the end of the first, I mean the second method. And now we're going to go through the first method. And trust me, first method is much shorter. That's why it's the first method. Okay. Or maybe not. I don't know. I just thought about it first. So here's what we're going to do one more time. The original problem is given as follows. We're supposed to find f of x. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing pretty much set the x plus 1 over x equal to another variable. Let's use z again, doesn't matter. Now, instead of going through all these quadratic hoops and all that stuff, I'm going to do the following. I'm just going to square both sides. Why not, right? Like, it's like, why do you do that? Why not? So you get x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 equals z squared. Isolate x squared plus 1 over x squared from here, z squared minus 2, and then square both sides again. Again, why not? Because there's a good reason you're going to get what you're looking for. So from here we get x to the 4th plus 1 over x to the 4th plus 2 equals z to the 4th minus 4z squared plus 4. And if you subtract 2 from both sides, you get the answer pretty much. And that becomes z to the 4th minus 4z squared plus 2. And remember f of x plus 1 over x equals this, right? And now replace x uh, plus 1 over x with z and you'll get f of z as before. Replace z with x, and don't worry, these x's and z's or y's are all dummy variables. They're just, you know, dummies. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> They're not the same. Uh, they have different roles, and you'll get the answer. And this really brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care, and bye-bye.